The veins qualsim is a venous disease specific quality of life questionnaire for patients with chronic venous insufficiency. It consists of 25 items. 10 of these relate to symptoms of chronic venous disease. Nine relate to limitations in activity as a result of symptoms. Five relate to the psychological impact of the disease. And one question refers to the change in leg symptoms over the previous one year. The vein sim is a subscale of the veins qual and consists of the 10 items relating to symptoms of chronic venous disease only. For both the veins qual and the vein sim, a score out of 100 is calculated and a higher score equates to a better quality of life outcome. The aim of our study was to evaluate changes in venous disease specific quality of life before and after iliac vein stenting for unilateral chronic outflow obstruction. Uh, patients were seen at baseline six months, 12, 24 and 36 months after stenting and the Velauta score was completed uh, each of these time points as well. We identified 188 patients who had completed the questionnaire and the baseline veins qual score was 35.6. This improved to 64.8 at six months follow up. The veins sims showed a um, significant improvement as well and these improvements were sustained at 12, 24 and 36 months. There was a good correlation observed between quality of life outcomes and the severity of post-thrombotic syndrome as measured by the Velauta score. The median Velauta score at baseline was 14, and this improved significantly to 9 at 6 months, 7.5 at 12 months, 7 at 24 months, and 6 at 36 months. And overall, our results demonstrate that the severity of post-thrombotic syndrome and venous disease-specific quality of life significantly improve after iliac vein stenting and that these improvements are maintained at long-term follow-up. So quality of life scores are hugely important to measure the success of an intervention uh, like iliac vein stenting, where the focus of treatment is on alleviation of symptoms and improvement of quality of life, and other metrics such as mortality and limb salvage are not so relevant. Although chronic venous disease is not a life-threatening condition, many patients feel like the disease is destructive to their quality of life and their ability to carry out their daily activities. And we need to find ways to reflect this in our assessment of disease severity and in our treatment outcome measures. Quality of life assessments have been underutilised for a number of reasons. Generic quality of life assessments, which are often incorporated into decision making about the economic benefits of an intervention, for example, do not fully capture all the aspects of a specific disease. Uh, but on the other hand, disease specific quality of life assessments are often time consuming and complex to administer and score correctly outside of a research setting. Uh, so even the veins qual sim, which is one of the best tools we have at the moment to assess venous disease specific quality of life, requires an adaptation to the original scoring system in order to measure change over time. And if these types of tools are to be incorporated into everyday clinical practice, um, they need to cover all of the elements of the disease that are important to patients, but also be straightforward to administer and there's still work to be done to design the ideal assessment tool. I think there are definitely lots of patients out there who would benefit from venous stenting, but patient selection is really the key. So patients need to have signs and symptoms of venous disease that are caused by an outflow obstruction. They need to have a suitable landing zone for the stent, and they need to have suitable inflow to keep the stents open. Patients need to be able to understand the risks and benefits of the procedure, and to commit to a programme of anticoagulation and rigorous duplex surveillance follow-up afterwards. Raising awareness of the potential benefits of venous stenting, particularly for patients with post-thrombotic syndrome, would be useful as there is still a belief uh, held by many practitioners that the only treatment for this condition is anticoagulation and compression stockings, and this results in patients sometimes getting referred later than they could be. However, there is also a need to improve education and technical skills amongst practitioners who are carrying out this intervention. As we've seen in recent months, there are consequences if these devices are not used appropriately. So there is a pressing need for more training of interventionalists to ensure that the right patients are being treated to get the best outcomes.